Hello and welcome back. In this part of the tutorial, I'll start by creating an interface for this class. So I'll just right click on this package and create a new interface. And I'd like to have that in a separate package. Then I'll call this interface user repository. Finish. So next, this interface will extend the JPA repository, which provides an easy mechanism to communicate with the database. And we need to pass into this repository, the name of our class, which is called user, and the type of the primary key, which is of type string. Back in the user class, I forgot to add messages to this pattern annotations. So for the phone number, I'll set the message to invalid phone number. And for the age, I'll set it to invalid age. So with all of this in place, I will now start developing the REST controller class. Once more, I'll right click here and create a new Java class. And I'll also have it in a separate package. I'll call it user controller. Finish. This is a REST controller, so I'll annotate it with address controller annotation now since the resources in this class will be accessed by an angular client application running on a separate domain we need to give that client application the right to access the resources in this class we do that by setting the at cross origin annotation and we set the origin to HTTP localhost 4200. This is the default port that the Angular application will be running on. We can as well set this to star, which means that any domain is allowed to access the resources in this class. And I'll also set the headers, allowed headers. I'll set it to star, which means all headers will be accepted. Next, I'll inject the repository we just created into this class. So at auto wired, private user repository, So next, I'm going to create a method that enables us to insert new users in the database. So public, for the time being, I'll leave out the return type. We're going to discuss about the functionality of this method before adding the return type. So I'll call the method create user. This method will take in the user we want to insert in the database. And the method will be responding to a post request coming in from the Angular client application. So I'll annotate it with a post mapping annotation. And I'll just call this create user. So in order to capture the data or the body of this object coming in from the Angular client application, we need to add here the add request body annotation. And for the validation annotations that we added in the user class to work, we need to also add here the add valid annotation. And finally, in front of this object, I'll add the binding result interface. So the goal of this interface is to read any errors that occurred in this user object. 
with this in place, we can now discuss on the implementation of this method and also decide on the return type. The very first thing we're going to do is to check whether there are any validation errors in this user object. If there are any, then we're going to return the validation error messages along with the status code back to the client application. If not, we're going to check whether the user already exists in the database or not. If it does exist, then we'll just return back a status code to the client. If it doesn't exist, we're going to insert the user object in the database and return the newly created user along with the status code back to the client. So with that said, it is clear that the return type needs to be a generic object and the object that best fits this situation is the object from the Java Lang class. I'll just go ahead here and add object as the return type. Just for a quick recap, it is worth knowing that every class in Java inherits from this object class. And by so doing, we can then return any object of our choice. And finally, for the return type, I'll also just go ahead and wrap this object with response entity. This is just an extension that enables us to also send HTTP status code as well as headers back to the client. With the return type now in place, let's continue with the implementation of this method. I'll start by declaring here a map. Now, this map is going to hold the name of the field where the error occurred as well as the error message. So the key is going to be a string and the value is also going to be a string. I'll just call it errors. Next, I'll use this object to check whether a validation error occurred or not. So if binding result that has errors, So all what we have to do here is to loop across the error messages and store the name of the field where the error occurred as well as the error message in this map here. So I will start by creating a new hash map. So errors should be equal to new hash map. So for the for loop, I'm going to use this object here to access the fields as well as the error messages. So once more, I'll copy this and create the for loop. So for field error, I'll just call it error. This should be from binding result dot get field errors in plural. this one and then we store the name of the field and the error message in this map here so i'll copy this errors dot put this should be error dot get field this one and this should be error dot get default message this one so we can now return these errors as well as a status code back to the client so just outside this for loop our type return new response entity this one so this should be the errors object as well as a status code so HTTP status I'll set this to a status of not accepted not acceptable you can choose any status of your choice next if there are no errors then we need to check whether the user already exists in the database or not so here I'll type user 
and use this repository to search for the user in the database. So user repository dot find by email user dot get email. This method does not exist in the repository. Let's create it. So I'll just click here to create it. And that is all we need to do here. Spring Data JPA will use this to query the database and search for the user that has this particular email address. So if this is not null, then we know the user already exists in the database. If you is not equal to null, like so and all we need to do here is to return a status code so once more I'll copy this and paste it here and get rid of these errors and change this status code to conflict so finally, if there were no errors and the user does not exist in the database, then we can create a new user. So I will just go ahead and copy this here and paste it here. And inside here, I will just type user repository dot save to insert a new user object in the database. And I will change this status code to okay which is a status code of 200 so with this we are basically done with the back end in the next video we are going to test the functionality of this implementation before moving on to the client application until then see you